Hello, this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you're all okay. Hope you're all surviving these very weird times we're in. And I'm just here to bring you a little bit of relief, a little bit of distraction, a um, little bit of crafty inspiration um, just to keep us all going. And today, this is my card. This, um, I brought you a, a card the other day, um, which was a very simple, simple stamping one made with this same set. Um, which I made for my daughter to send to my husband. Um, this is the card I made for him. He's a guitarist and a singer, so I thought this was very, very appropriate for him. It's the card I made for him. Um, love, love, love this set. So appropriate for so many people. Um, haven't used it as much as I should have done, really, and I really need to remedy that before um, it um, becomes retired. I hope it doesn't become retired in the new catalogue, but it may be. Um, so we're going to make this card today. So what do we need? We need a card blank. Move my stamps out of the way. Card blank, which is my usual card. Um, it's basic, but I'm using basic black and it is it measures 21 by 14 and a half and i've scored at 10 and a half if you're in metric it's eight and a quarter scored at four and an eighth and this is five and three quarters and then i have a piece of dsp now i have to admit this is retired dsp this is from the um i might do it that way around um from the honey no, Golden Honey papers, which were free in during celebration. Um, if you're watching this and you're in the UK or one of our European countries and you need a pack of this and you don't have it, I do actually have a pack for sale, um, a spare pack that I managed to get during celebration. Um, unfortunately... I wouldn't be able to send it as 12 by 12 because I can't get to the post office at the moment. So if you wanted it, I'd have to cut it down to 6 by 12. Um, but I'm happy to do that. So if you if you need um, this um, pack of this paper, let me know. But anyway, uh, we're going to glue. So this is just half a centimetre smaller than our card front so that there's a border of two and a, two and a half millimetres around the edge. If you're working in inches, it will be quarter of an inch so that you have an eighth of an inch um, all around the edge. So I've just put a little bit of Tombow on there and I'm just going to smooth it out with a cocktail stick. I'll give you a nice edge that's really glued down well at the edges. I can't bear it when edges raise up. Um, I like my cards, even though oh no, they're handmade. I like them to make look professional. I don't want them to look homemade, if you know what I mean. So there we go. So line that up um, like so, and that's going there. Right, and then we're going to do some stamping. So we're going to be using our set. So got a little bit of Whisper White card here, and just let put that to one side to dry. A little bit of Whisper White card here. And I'm going to take the treble clef stamp, which actually very clever. So I've stamped the treble clef there, but very cleverly, you can turn it into a guitar. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you need the other stamp, which is this long head of the guitar. Um, and I am using, I'm going to use my um, embossing buddy, first of all, just to rub over here to make sure that I don't get any spare specks of embossing powder all around there and then I'm going to come in now some of you know I have a Versamark pad that I've put a little bit of um, smoky slate um, ink in because I sometimes when I'm stamping with Versamark I want to be able to see what I've stamped and if I'm going to emboss in gold or silver or something it doesn't matter because it won't show once I've put the embossing powder on so I am going to stamp and this card isn't cut to the right size yet, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to stamp my treble clef, point it straight on the paper. There we go. It doesn't look like that side is very inky, but hey-ho. And then I'm going to come in with the head of the guitar, and I'm going to line up. This bottom bit is going to line up with the outside of this circle, and the top bit here is going to line up with the top of the treble clef. So it's going to be on the huh as we would say in Norfolk, like so. There we go. And then I'm just gonna come in with my gold embossing powder. And 
and there we are. Okay, I'm just going to give it a blow off camera. There we go. Right, okay, I'm just going to take a tissue. I've just got some. I don't think my hands are very clean actually. Um, I was just stamping earlier and I think I've got some residue of ink on them. Right, there we go. And I've got a little bit of powder there, which I don't want. So I'm just going to squish that off. Uh, how careful I tried to be. I do seem to get powder everywhere. Right, and now I just want two little notes. I'm going to do a treble clef up here. No, I'm not going to do a treble clef. It's a, a two quavers. Sorry, I'm not thinking. And then I'm going to do a little quaver, just one single quaver down here. And then I'm just going to bring my embossing powder in again. So you can see it doesn't matter that there's ink in the Bursa Mark because once it's got embossing powder on it covers up and it just means you can see a bit more clearly what you're stamping. You can just about see with the Bursa Mark pad but not very well. Right, so I'm going I'm to bring in my heat gun but then I'm going to cut this piece of card down. So let's just heat emboss it. Still a magical process when the ink when the powder starts to turn just so low so it's this horrible dull brown powder and then as it gets warm it turns into this lovely gold embossed image you're new to card making it's just I can remember the first time I saw it, it was at a craft fair somebody was demonstrating I just imagine it was just so brilliant right there we go there is my um, lovely gold embossed guitar and notes. So before I finish this, I'm just going to stamp happy birthday down at the bottom here because I'm going to use this piece of card for my happy birthday message as well. You could do all the stamping and then, the, then put the powder on if you wanted. I tend to do it like this, do a bit at a time. And as long as you don't heat, so I've got to be careful I don't overheat that image now because otherwise it will go flat and sink into the paper. So I'm going to keep my heat gun angled down. If you heat overheat embossing, it will just go flat, sink into the paper. Um, there we go. It doesn't take as long once you've heated up your heat gun. It gets nice and warm. It doesn't take as long. Right, so now we're going to trim that piece of card down. And I'm not going to use any measurements because I know how I want it to look. So I want it to, to be so similar distance from the top to the bottom here. And then that note can be quite close. So I'm just doing this by eye. So I'm not using measurements. So this is probably going to end up a very different size to the one I did before. But I just wanted to show you my process. Right, so... There we go, let's see how different it is. Oh, mine's slightly bigger than the one I used before, which I might trim a little bit more off. Mm, I think that might be enough. Slightly bigger, but I don't think it matters. Right, okay, lovely. Okay, and so, and I'm just gonna trim my happy birthday down while I've got the cutter out. So, just trim off little bit at the bottom there this little trimmer has been so so helpful I didn't I wasn't sure I ever even wanted one um, and now I can't imagine living without it it's funny with things like that isn't it I was, some of a lot of things in my life I bought and didn't really really want them or didn't realize and now they're the most useful thing and that's especially so for this little trimmer absolutely love it use it all the time and because it's so dinky it sits on my desk all the time I've got room for the other cutters but this one just sits on my desk so it's so handy right there we go and then we need to cut down the other pieces of cardstock so I need a piece of black let's get a piece of black out right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I normally work because I don't normally cut layers um, to sizes what I normally do is I just take a pencil and I mark where I want to cut. So normally when I do tutorials, I say do it this size and then do it this size and then do it that. But actually that's not the way I work. This is how I work. I normally mark the 
cardstock and do it like that. So that's my black, which should now border that nicely, which it does. So I'm going to glue that on. A bit of a bulge in my, there we go, my DSP there. Right, let's put the lid on this ink pad before I put something in it. Um, right, what do I need? I need my cardstock and my panel. There we go. So a little bit of Tombow around here. Like so. And then that mounts onto there. Now we're going to use cold foil now next. And the gold foil is not a cheap resource. So what you can do, what I've got, managed to get glue on there. How did I manage to do that? There we go. Um, you, if you get a bit of glue like that with Tombow, you can use the rubber afterwards and it will it will just rub out. Um, you can take it off, but you need to leave it to dry. Right, okay, and so now we're going to do this, the gold. And I'm going to show you what I will do with the gold, just because it's such an expensive resource. And most of it is not going to be seen under here. So I'm going to trim that down to the right size on my little trimmer. It's quite a small piece, it's actually, I might not do this, but I will just show you. So take your big trimmer and what you can do is, because this has got, like a free floating blade, you can actually cut the middle out of your gold foil. Nobody's going to see it because you're going to layer this. So, and then you've got another little bit of gold foil left over to use for another project. Don't cut it too near to the, the edges. I oh, probably did that one a bit too much near the edge. Um, but it is a, quite a good way to save some a little bit of money so there we go right and that you might just need to come in with some scissors and just finish off the corners if you haven't got them quite properly but it's fine so it's called gutting so you just gut your cardstock so actually you end up with a border so i haven't done this very carefully actually because i've got very long uh, very wide bits and very very small bits but you get the idea um, and as crafters we've never got a lot of money have we so right so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put tear and tape so there you see not going to be able to tell and now I've got a little bit of gold left over to use for another project which will be very useful might save a few pennies I'm going to take some tear and tape now because I'm not very keen on using Tombow on the silver foil because I don't think it's very porous and it might not um, adhere properly or if it does adhere now it's likely to dry out and then fall off at a later stage. So I tend to use tear and tape when I'm sticking onto um, the foil papers. So there we go. Only problem with tear and tape, of course, is you won't get wiggle room. You need to make sure you've positioned it properly before you start because um, there we go. And this one. If I could get it off, that one doesn't want to come off that end doesn't always play ball sometimes difficult to get the there we go get the backing off here let's go up to here I've no idea how people do this with their nails it's hard enough with tweezers and I haven't got this long enough nails to get them under here oh that one's doing there we go that's all done right and so I just need to line this up very carefully on my gold foil because if I don't it's going to glue wonky 
which I don't want. So just make sure all the sides are lined up nicely and then commit. There we go. And, oh yeah, it's a little bit of overhang from the tear and tape, which is sticking to my grid board. So this is going to go on my card here and then the birthday is going to go at the bottom. So I'm going to go back to using my Tombow. Just, um, I don't know if you're aware, but as I was stamping up demos, we're not really allowed to keep stock. So stamp sets or dies or punches, we're not allowed to keep them in stock. But actually we are allowed to keep glue. So if anyone who's in the UK especially just needs to order glue, um, the postage for me to send it to you, I, I've got a little stock, so the postage for me to send it to you would only be £3 um, as opposed to five, nearly £5 if you ordered from Stamping Up. So if you're ever short of glue... You can just make an order direct with me. There we go. Glue that there. And then the last thing we're going to do is just glue on our birthday. We can find it. Here it is. I'm just going to glue that on at the bottom. And then we are done. Cool. Bit of water there. I put this in it on a damp sponge and I just moistened my sponge before I came on camera so the, the nozzle had absorbed a little bit of the water. But that's okay. I always say you get warts and all with my videos. You get, get all my mistakes and things going wrong as well as all the things going right. Um, there we go. So, a very appropriate card for a, um, a musician. Um, of course, this is on black card, so you would need to put an insert in. So, should we do that? Should I do that quickly? It's not the box. I'm just going to find a piece of white card. Uh, if I can quickly find a bit of... Well, I've got lots of thick here, but then... Oh, there's a thin. just wanted to use a piece of thin card. Right, so I'm going to trim this down to... Ten, just under 10 I think this is this this is slightly smaller than so I had to cut a bit off it so okay so I'm going to do this nine and you can cut this this slightly smaller anyway so I'm going to do this nine and a half so the inside panel you might decide to do even smaller than the outside panel um, I'm going to do it 14 ish there we go. So it's just, you're just again doing it half a centimetre or more smaller than your outside panel. <laughs> Let's see if that looks okay. That'll be perfect. That's all right. So again, a little bit of Tombow. Because you can't write in a card that's black inside, so you will have to put a panel in these. Um, so let's put glue there. Oh, now I've got it all over my thumb. Trouble with the Tombow is it does stay a bit tacky. So if you get it anywhere, it does tend to stay tacky for quite a long time, which is great sometimes because you want that tackiness, but sometimes you don't. There we go. Let's make sure I'm right at the corner there and there. Right, okay. And this is going inside my card. Now, if you wanted it really to match the front, you could have done some gold embossed notes on here, which would be quite nice. But as I've now stuck my panel down before I thought of that, I'm going to do just do some black notes. So I'm going to take my memento ink and just do a few notes. I'm going to do two lots of double quavers. And I've got a feeling those double qu quavers are called something. I used to be quite musical, but I can't for the life of me remember what they might be called. I've lost my other note. There it is. You could tell me in the comments on the video if you like, if there's a, no if there's a name for those double um, quavers. There we go. I know they're called a triplet if you have three. What are they called if you just have two? Long time since I did any proper music, I have to say. Now I've handed all my musical genes on to my kids and I don't do any. Anyway, that was my husband's birthday card. Hope you like it. I've now got another spare one to send to it. I've got loads of musical friends, so that will come in very, very useful. So I hope you like my card. 
there's the two of them once again I made an exact copy which is very very unlike me um, I'll put the rough dimensions of these panels in the blog when I write it up um, but like I say you can just trim it down um, and cut like I did okay right that's it from me today please stay well stay safe stay away from this horrible virus um, and hopefully we will come out the other side but meanwhile do come back for some more crafty inspiration I'll see you again soon bye